Hi, I'm Jim Hall. I'm director of the Environmental Change Institute in Oxford, and I'm leading the Marius project, which is on managing the risks, impacts and uncertainties of giants and water scarcity. I'm going to provide a overview of the Marius project and in particular explain what we mean by a risk based approach to managing droughts and water scarcity. Droughts and water scarcity have somehow gone up the agenda globally. This picture here comes from the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report of uh, 2015 and it shows that uh, water related risks are at the top of the the spectrum in terms of uh, risks which are identified at least by the businessmen who were consulted in in this survey and also in the UK though it might seem surprising when I'm recording this now we're under water in much parts of the country but drought is recognized as being one of the risks that is significant. For example, on this picture here comes from the Cabinet Office's National Risk Register and shows that drought is, is up there. It's not right up there in terms of the, the highest risk to the country, but it's a significant risk. And that is surprising if you know the uh, English weather but it's as much to do with the changing patterns of water demand, so how much water we're withdrawing from the environment, as it is to do with the occasional um, weather and climatic conditions which it, we experience, which mean that um, there's less water available in the environment for uh, people, businesses, industries, farmers to use. And actually, Climate change is making uh, matters more challenging in that sense. A hotter climate is going to mean more uh, evaporation, transpiration um, and less water going into rivers. So this is a significant risk. It's not a well understood risk, but it's something that uh, water utilities, the Environment Agency, government uh, are concerned about and in part they're concerned because it's a risk that hasn't been systematically analyzed in the UK much less so for example than the risks of flooding and that's what the uh, the Marius project is trying to to get to the bottom of if we look uh, back in history uh, we can see that, that there have been periods of uh, severe drought the most noteworthy um, in, in living memory, probably being 1975-1976, but uh, even as recently as 2012, there was the prospect of severe water shortages in the southeast and London in particular going in the early part of 2012 before it suddenly started raining and then we had record rainfall for the rest of that year. But if that hadn't happened, the consequences might have been uh, quite severe. There's analysis which was done for Thames Water, which indicates that the economic risk uh, of severe water shortages in London would have amount to about £300 million a day. And you can imagine what some of the implications of severe water shortage might be um, in terms of, for example, uh, cooling of the underground, um, availability of water in uh, business places, just the disruption of people um, having to, uh, uh, to wait for water or to go out of their houses to collect water. So this is a significant risk. It's not a well understood risk and that's for a number of different reasons. One is uh, because of what's happening with the weather and the climate uh, influences water availability in, in a very complex way. Droughts materialize over an extended time scale and they're not sudden events, they gradually build up, they depend on um, what's happening to groundwater and soil water 
over a long time frame and spatially they can be quite variable one can be have a drought in one part of the country and not in another then on the other hand uh, uh, droughts are as much an issue to do with how much water is being taken out of the environment what infrastructure is available to uh, store water how much water is uh, being returned to the environment for example from wastewater treatment and there's interplay between uh, both the amount of water available and the water quality and then when we start thinking about droughts we also begin to recognize the uh, complexity of the different types of impact that can occur during droughts I've already mentioned the possibility for significant economic impact um, on uh, businesses on households but also on farmers on industry and in particular um, energy uh, suppliers who are dependent on inland water for cooling power plants but droughts uh, also have significant um, social and political ramifications and uh, water scarcity can impact in very serious ways as can harmful water quality upon the environment now the environment to, to, to some extent is is adapted to droughts there are natural phenomena where things um, get harmful for the environment is where human interference um, over abstraction of water um, harmful water quality combines with a meteorological drought which leads to environmental impacts and all of these phenomena are changing um, in complex ways and a number of the changes um, are pointing in the wrong direction so uh, climate change uh, could lead to drier conditions uh, population increase changing patterns of economic activity um, could lead to increasing demand for water though on the other hand if the right steps are taken in policy terms demand um, could go down and in all of this we see competing objectives different people organizations actors more broadly um, wanting to get different things out of the system and the not being complete knowledge about how exactly the system is behaving so within the Marius project we're trying to get our hands around all of that and say well how can we use new interdisciplinary science that stretches right the way across environmental science economics the social sciences engineering to come up with a better way of managing these risks and navigating the inevitable trade-offs and what we're aiming for is an approach which more explicitly takes account of what we understand about the probabilities and consequences of drought events so in that sense is more specifically and explicitly risk-based and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment we're looking explicitly against the, uh, about the full range of possible impacts of droughts so what what are the outcomes which people actually care about um, what is usually thought about for example in regulatory terms is how much water might there be available when and where that's an intermediate variable what we should really be concerned about is what are the outcomes of droughts and water scarcity for people for the environment and uh, then looking across those different outcomes understand how they interact with one another what the trade-offs are and what are the implications of the sometimes major uncertainties going forwards so within the Marius project the way in which we've structured our research is to begin by looking at um, how we think about or in other words how we frame droughts and water scarcity what's the context which all of this fits within then uh, we're doing a very broad ranging analysis about um, what are the impacts of droughts um, so uh, what are the drivers of those impacts in climatic 
hydrological terms and then what are the dim different dimensions of impact in terms of ecology, economy, society, industry and agriculture. And then we're bringing all of that together to channel that knowledge to inform decision making. So how can this pro improved understanding of the impacts of droughts, but also the options for managing droughts um, help us to make better decisions in the future. And right the way through that, uh, we're working very hard to engage with practitioners from a number of different perspectives who are actually doing this as part of their day job to understand how the science that we're developing can inform the types of decisions that they're involved in. I mentioned uh, that at the heart of this project is analysis of the risk of droughts. So I'm now just going to step through briefly what that actually amounts to. And it begins with understanding um, of what are the climatological drivers um, which are influencing the amount of water in the environment, how much water is flowing down rivers, uh, how much uh, water is going to recharge groundwater. And uh, we're looking at that statistically as this picture depicts. Um, and in particular, we're using large numbers of climate scenarios to look at what are the ways in which uh, water availability might change in future. Naturally, there's a lot of variability around that, which is what um, the uh, the probability distributions at the top of the diagram and the, uh, the the wide bands of variability depicted in blue, red, and grey at the bottom of the diagram um, indicate. But we're all different. We're also seeing that different climate models are projecting different amounts of trend. The red uh, band is higher than the blue band. Those are both plausible futures, which have been predicted from climate models, and that's where our um, risk analysis begins. We then uh, put those projections of weather and climate through um, models of uh, catchments and river basins to uh, estimate how much water there might be in rivers available for different uses. And then we simulate the whole system for withdrawing water from the environment, for storing it, treating it, returning it to rivers, um, distributing it amongst different users within water resource system models. Those take um, our simulated series of flows as an input and we have to uh, represent the rules for where water and when water can be withdrawn from the system. And those um, abstraction arrangements themselves are determined by how much water is available and it's those um, trigger levels of water availability that trigger restrictions on the amount of water that people can use. And then for given levels of restriction, we're looking at what are the different impacts for a range of different users, um, including the customers of water utilities. This table shows what um, Thames Water's um, uh, targets are for the frequency with which they um, uh, might impose restrictions on their customers. What we know, however, is that um, we can't precisely estimate how frequently those restrictions might occur in the future. Given the uncertainties, um, what we are able to do is to try and estimate the probability of those targets being met or not. And that's um, the way in which we're thinking about representing the changing risk of water shortage in future. So here we're looking at that probability of, um, uh, of a water utility uh, failing to meet its target, in this case for a so-called level three um, shortage. Uh, and we're looking at how that risk of water shortages changes through time, uh, how it's influenced by different factors. In, here, in this picture here, we're looking at the effect of population growth, which will drive up demand for water and will increase the risk of water shortages, as might um, additional regulatory requirements limiting the amount of water taken out of rivers. 
and then we can look at what are the options for responding to that um, and here we're looking at the uh, potential contribution that um, uh, additional effort on reducing demand on uh, reducing leakage might have getting us from the black dotted line to the blue dotted line um, what effect uh, additional supply in this case from a large reuse plant um, might have on reducing that risk of water shortage so what we're aiming for in the end is an approach to uh, planning water resource systems which looks at a much broader range of possible conditions those systems might be subject to in future and that involves drawing together a number of different lines of evidence we've got to look to the past and and see what's happened historically in terms of uh, periods of drought we need to um, get what we can from uh, climate models so we recognize the limitations of those models and we're doing a lot of work on trying to simulate realistic synthetic droughts so these are the droughts which haven't occurred but are consistent with the statistics um, we've seen in the past or might expect in the future we then need to test a very wide range of possible water resource systems um, so arrangements for investment in infrastructure for fixing leaks for um, uh, reducing demand simulate those and see how they might cope when they're stress tested in this wide range of possible future conditions and um, given the performance of the system we want to evaluate what that actually might mean for different users of water for farmers for power producers for people and households and also for the environment so that we can use that to um, understand the trade-offs between these different users of water and try and identify water resource management options which are um, able to cope with the risk that are not um, either under or over investing um, and that have demonstrable benefits in terms of managing risks um, and known implications in terms of the trade-offs for other users that brings me to the end of the overview of what the Marius project is doing and what we mean by a risk based approach to water resources management um, there's a lot of other very interesting activity taking place in Marius and uh, the other podcasts that are available will be able to go into a bit more depth on those pieces of research thank you very much for listening